Hello, YouTube. This is a mini episode of Called Bank Sports. Uh, we are a new growing channel here on YouTube that focuses on the Utah Jazz. We've been doing lots of off-season, preseason, um, pumping up for the season content. And one of the most exciting moves during the off-season for the Jazz was them signing Derek Favors and bringing him back. So please remember, before we continue with the video, Subscribe, hit the notification bell, help support a growing channel, especially if you're a Jazz fan. The more you watch, the more content about the Utah Jazz we can put out. But without further ado, let's talk about how we think Derek Favors will do this season with the Utah Jazz. So, Nate, obviously there's not been a huge, like too many major changes with the Jazz as far as stylistically since Derek Favors left a season ago. So how do you think, like, what are you ex looking for for a, su a successful Derek Favors this season? Well, I honestly was super surprised by this um, deal going down. I had obviously heard kind of rumors, but I felt like it was more of like jazz fans speculating and just really wanting Derek Favors to come back because he's such a fan favorite, just such a hometown hero. And while he's not from Utah, like, I really feel like after he came here in that trade in his rookie season that he really just assimilated and just really became to be like part of Utah and was the only player that had been on there since like I can remember most after all the turnover that had happened. So I really think it's just going to be super big on keeping the bench defense stout. Um, a lot of people are saying that we can be a top five defense again, which I think is possible just because Shoring up the bench unit will help so much. And our offensive unit still does our first unit does a really good job. I am, however, kind of concerned where what made us a top, like the top defense in the league, if I remember when Derek Favors was here, was also having Ricky Rubio and having Jay Crowder, who, while they're shooting at sometimes could be depressing to say the least as a jazz fan, the way that they defended just put us at that other level. So I think favors will just definitely help sure up the bench. So we're not letting um, other bench units bring their teams back into it. I don't know how high up they'll get rank wise, but it's a really big move on the defensive end of the ball. Yeah. And you kept talking about showing up that bench unit. Um, the jazz have an interesting team and I, they've had a really unique team in the, the past several years, but I think this year it's interesting because you can, I could think of maybe eight, maybe even nine guys who may be in or out of the starting lineup. And obviously Derek favors, he is a starting caliber power forward or center. Uh, so if the jazz wanted to go the route of starting him next to go bear, they could, but what we saw when he was on the jazz before is he really didn't play well with go bear. And so I wonder if the Jazz are going to take more of a strategy of balancing out the starters versus bench units, right? Um, because something that you mentioned favors he really benefited from having that perimeter defense and that um, basketball IQ from like Ricky Rubio and uh, someone like Jay Crowder. And obviously they're not on the team. But something that he did amazing with that I think the jazz were missing last season was that pick and roll with Joe Ingles. And so I know before the show, we, we tried to look into some stats and it was a little bit tough to find, but even just with the eye test, uh, how like if Derek favors was on the jazz last season, how big of a difference would have that, would that have made for the jazz, especially with, like in the playoffs against the nuggets where they fell apart. Do you think, that both the defense that favors brings and the uh, different approaches the Jazz could take on offense with the pick and roll with Joe Ingles, and I'm sure he can fit in with Bogdanovich and Conley if they need to. Um, but do you think this is like a level up for the Jazz or just a nice little boost? Like, does it take the Jazz into a brand new tier? I guess is what I'm going for. I think it takes the Jazz bench unit into a brand new tier, just to keep throwing out that word, because last year, their offensive unit, uh, sorry, their first unit, the offense there was just astounding, and they were able to get points up, but up until Clarkson came, the bench unit was just dreadful on the offensive end, and even after Clarkson came and was able to give the offensive boost to like 
hopefully keep this game in a similar score for when the first unit came back, the defense still couldn't do anything. Um, They were one of the worst ones in the league, and that just really hurt because if you watch, the Jazz would blow leads with the bench, and then you'd have to have Donovan and Rudy come back in and Conley and try to get that lead to get back up again to, to be able to finish out the game. So I really think that not only does this make it so defensively, the bench unit is going to be one of the best in the leagues, you know, on par with the level of defense for other team starters in um, most of those teams, though being non-playoff teams. But like you said, the Ingles favors ro- um, pick and roll, I think is just going to bring a lot more confidence to Joe Ingles game and open up his shooting a lot more. Now, I do think a lot of the time when Jazz fans are frustrated with Ingles shooting and with O'Neal shooting, um, it's just because there's we expect so much from them because they're able to shoot more than 40% behind the arc. But we really do need Ingles to be playing well if we want to have any hope of making it to the Western Conference Finals. So to give such an offensive threat that when Ingles passes the ball to them down low, it's not a questionable decision and it can lead to points that then like just boost the confidence of the whole bench unit together is just super like exciting as a jazz fan to just not have the bench unit be a liability. And so that's what I'm looking forward to the most is having a bench unit that I have a lot more confidence in this season. Yeah, I think, I would not be surprised if the Utah Jazz, if one of their bench players walked away with the sixth man of the year award. Um, I, I think the front runner on their Jazz would obviously be Jordan Clarkson, but um, I think having those other pieces that can take a little bit of the pressure off, like obviously Jordan Clarkson can take most of the scoring, but then he might not have to spend as much energy on defense because of Derek Favors. And he doesn't have to have the ball in his hand all the time because... They can. Uh, Joe Ingles is now a little more dangerous now that he has a stronger center with Derek Favors. So I think this is one of those where bringing Derek Favors in, you're getting more than what Derek Favors is because of how he complements those pieces. And so it's almost like if if Jordan Clarkson is like a plus three to the bench normally, and Joe Ingles is like a plus two, then you bring in Derek Favors, who's like also he's like a plus two or three, but then he also makes Joe Ingles a plus five, and Jordan Clarkson can probably also be like a plus six. Uh, and these are arbitrary numbers. It's not like I'm talking about plus minus, but if you if you think about that boost where he allows them to do different things, or even just he allows them to not do things on defense, or even just sit in the th- corner three because he draws more attention on the offensive end. Uh, One more interesting thing before we wrap up is uh, this video. uh, It's like really focused on Derek Favors, but uh, we've been talking about the bench the whole time, especially since he makes all those players on the bench better because of what he can do and what he adds to the system. But I think it's interesting to look at last season, the jazz, like obviously you said they were missing some defensive pieces. But if you look at the Jazz bench this season compared to some of the starting lineups last season of the worst teams, I would probably take the Jazz bench in a lot of games against teams like the Cavaliers or teams like the Pistons last season. Obviously, the Cavaliers have... um, They had Drummond and Kevin Love, which is better than any bench player on the Jazz, but they just didn't really fit into the Cavs. And same with the Pistons, like Blake Griffin was injured, so it felt like really all they had was um, Wood and Rose. And Wood is a player who just broke out last season because he got more minutes. So I think the Utah Jazz, like, we're in for a good season if everyone can stay healthy. Obviously, their starting lineup is extremely talented, and the bench is potentially going to be the best in the nation in the NBA this year. And talking about the starting lineup, um, we've really focused on, you know, favors coming in and with the second unit because that's where he'll see the majority of his minutes, probably 15 to 16 a night. But there will more likely than not be four to five minutes with the starting units, maybe even at the beginning. And 
I mean, in 2018, that did cause a lot of problems because when you had Favors out there who can't shoot a three, when you had Gobert out there who can't shoot a, fr- a three, along with Rubio who's shooting is questionable, like that caused a lot of problems. But with the new offense the Jazz have been running, um, almost a more Rocket-style offense, when you have Bojan, when you have Mike, and when you have Donovan all out there, who even though Rudy and Favors can't shoot, Derek can't shoot, I mean, what they're doing is putting three players out there who can shoot the lights out. So I'm really excited to see like how that works out since the Jazz have a really awesome new look offense. And that's what really what we're going to be covering in this week's um, other episode. So b- please remember to like and ring that notification bell and come on out and check out our other episodes, especially the one that we're about to record about the Utah Jazz preseason and what hopes that gives us for the off season. Sorry, for the normal, <laughs> for the regular season coming up. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.